specific model. Uh, I just go with the background from this top part, star to finish on the bottom part. Please not see any black color uh, on the painting. Start the dark blue, uh, mix with black, a little bit red. So there is nice darkness uh, between red and black we have. And then move on with the red, a little bit yellow. Again, some part it's a little bit darker and move down uh, with white color to mix a little bit blue color and then yellow. We move on continue similar because this is the water and all is reflection of our sky color, but in vice versa, like uh, when it's yellow here, this is the horizon line. This line is the horizon. The yellow is here, show the reflection. So the reflection is should be here. And the blue reflection is here. And this part reflection is here. So we finish everything that we see on the background. And then with black color, we move on on top and add all these details with Heron and the waves and everything on top. part which is my blue color here so I take my flat brush actually the size of your brush it depends on the size of your surface it, it's a little bit better to be for this one I go with a bigger one so I choose this I start with pure uh, blue color it can be cobalt or ultramarine because both color uh, cobalt and ultramarine is dark color we can start and apply so flatly uh, cover from left to right. And then after that, because the most part is really dark, just, just a little bit of fade surface we can see in blue. So I don't go more than this. I switch my black and I bring it on my blue. I try to fade the blue color into my black and darkness, but not all the part. Just go on back and make it a little bit goes darker. Because black is so powerful, make sure not cover everywhere. We need to keep the blue color as well. Especially here should be more blue and on the right side, less. And then bring it down. Again, go on back. When, when the boat color is wet, they very fast mix together and blend into each other and give us a good result. Go on back and cover the surface. Even if you cover lots of part with the blue, you can again back to blue and cover it here with the blue. It's nice to keep the blue color. Okay, and then with black, I move down. As I mentioned, here is a little bit, it's we move toward uh, this color, mixture of black and red. 
So I try to clean my brush with napkin or rag like this. And then switch to uh, the color that I mix with black and red. Then move on with this color. Pure and heavy color, I think. Cover it. I don't want to let the between my colors uh, line create. So again, back to black. From black, I move on into my brown color. Actually, when you mix your red with uh, black, you, you will make a little bit browny color. So I disappear. I try to disappear the line between the black and my brown. So like this. And now I need a little reddish color to bring here. You see here, it's more reddish color. Anytime you would like to switch another paint, just clean your brush with your mm, rag or napkin. Please not clean it with the water. So switch your pure red color, bring it here. And when you move on with the red into your uh, brownie color, already your color is dipped down and then we will reach the result that we want. Because both color is wet. When both color is get dry, not give us the same result. Move on like that. And then try to fade it into the rest of my brownie color. Even if you want to show that your red color is more visible, please uh, use less pressure in your hand and try to sit your paint on your surface a little bit gentle and with very less pressure smoothly touch your surface we don't have any red color on that part so again here is get dry actually when you work on top of wood it's so fast get dry again i try to cover it by brown color because i need to be wet and again back to my pure red Then continue for the soft part. So it's get dry so fast. I switch again to my pure red color to add. And then move on into my mixture of red and yellow to add on top. Even you can use tip of your flat brush and make some line on top. And clean my brush, switch to a pure yellow color for here. I move on with that with the dark color later. I just go first of all with the yellow, uh, with red, pure yellow on top. When I bring pure yellow, because the yellow is a light color, I try to add less pressure on my hand and try to sit on top of my sky with this warm color, very less pressure. With pure yellow, I move on into my orangey tone and try to reduce that orange tone a little bit. And 
why I keep it like this. I take my Filbert brush and switch to my red color and this browny tone because I would like to bring a little bit darker cloud on here. Filbert brush is a little curve on top and I can easily draw the shape of my cloud. So I move on between the red and this brown color for here. And then take a pure yellow color, heavy pure yellow color, and then cover all the surface. When it is napkin, bring the pure white color.
part is all the details that we see with the black color. So I start for the line that I see for the horizon and all these wave shape and the grass and then uh, heron. You can finish everything by just tiny uh, round brush or even the flat brush. So most of the time I prefer to go with a flat brush for all the wave on top of the river that I see and these grasses. For me, it's more easier to go with flat brush. You can practice with both. I just go with the black, make the tip of my flat brush a little wet with the black. And the surface should be wet. Actually mine, I use heavy paint. In some case, I didn't see wet. It get dry. The horizon line, I try to use, I keep some uh, yellow color on, uh, for the top part. So I start from here. A little gently, I move on. Mine is, is not completely dry and it's mixed with the yellow. So it's not really dark now. That's fine. I try to make it more dark later. So I try just the flat line because of the horizon. Just this line is flat. The rest is the broken line and the wavy line. So I go with this. This is the horizon. And then the other line is tiny bit and then you can go with, go with just the zigzaggy shape, broken line. Use the tip of, um, actually the side of your flat brush like that.
I take my black color to cover the rest. The body is a little bit fat and bigger. So I draw C curve here, C curve on top and C curve on the bottom part. I just draw the shape first and then uh, fill inside. So this is the tail, this is the body part, and here is for the foot. A little bit bent here. And then continue here too. When you want to come inside the water for the uh, for the foot, you should be a little bit narrow. So use just the tip of your brush. Now I place the body. The neck is just has a gentle C curve on here, this part, and then it's move here, and then again, like S shape. It's so similar to that, like that. And then the top part, which is head and the knee. Make the neck a little bit thicker. Neck is a little bit pointy. The top part where the head I spread here like that into the sky. And then there is some tiny point here. 